Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Monday, July 13th, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the approval of Rucobia for treatment experience patients with HIV and Encovi for the treatment of specific types of MDS. We'll also talk about the approval of Upnik, which will be used to treat acquired blepharoptosis. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you can get the drugs that interest you. First up, the FDA-approved Fostemsevir, which goes by brand name Rucobia, a new treatment type of antiretroviral medication for adults living with HIV who have tried multiple HIV medications and whose HIV infection cannot be successfully treated with other therapies because of resistance, intolerance, or safety considerations. It's estimated that at the end of 2018 that 1.2 million people aged 13 and older had HIV in the U.S., including an estimated 14% of people whose infections had not been diagnosed. Heavily treatment-experienced patients that would qualify for treatment with Rucobia account for only about 6% of the entire HIV population on medication. That's approximately 60,000 individuals. Rucobia is the first in a new class of products called attachment inhibitors for the treatment of HIV. By latching onto the GP120 protein on the surface of HIV, It blocks the virus from entering and infecting immune cells. It is taken as an extended-release tablet twice daily in combination with other antiretrovirals. The safety and efficacy of Rucobia was evaluated in a clinical trial of 371 heavily treatment-experienced adult patients who continued to have high levels of virus, that's HIV RNA, in their blood despite being on antiretroviral drugs. 272 patients were treated in the main trial arm, and an additional 99 patients received Rucobia in a different trial arm. Most patients had been treated for HIV for more than 15 years, had been exposed to five or more different HIV treatment regimens before entering the trial, and had a history of AIDS. Participants in the main cohort of the trial received either Rucobia or a placebo twice daily for eight days, in addition to their failing antiretroviral regimen. On the eighth day, participants treated with Rucobia had a significantly greater decrease in levels of HIV RNA in their blood compared to those taking the placebo. After the eighth day, all participants received Rucobia with other antiretroviral drugs. After 24 weeks of Rucobia plus other antiretroviral drugs, 53% of participants achieved HIV RNA suppression, where levels of HIV were low enough to be considered undetectable. After 96 weeks, 60% of participants continued to have HIV RNA suppression. The most common adverse reaction to Rucobia was nausea. Severe adverse reactions included elevation of liver enzymes, in patients who were co-infected with hepatitis B or C virus, and also changes in the immune system. The FDA granted this application fast-track, priority review, and breakthrough therapy designations, and the approval was granted to Vive Healthcare. The FDA also approved the combination tablet of decitabine and cedazuridine, which goes by brand name Encovi, for treatment of adult patients with myelodysplastic syndromes, that's MDS, and chronic myelomonocytic leukemia, CMML. This represents an important advancement in treatment options for patients with MDS who previously needed to visit a healthcare facility to receive IV therapy. Myelodysplastic syndromes are a group of cancers in which immature blood cells in the bone marrow do not mature 
and therefore do not become healthy blood cells. Early on, no symptoms typically are seen. Later, though, symptoms may include feeling tired, shortness of breath, easily bleeding, or frequent infections. Some types may develop into acute myeloid leukemia. Encovi is an orally administered fixed dose combination of the approved anti cancer DNA hypomethylating agent decitabine, together with cedazuridine, an inhibitor of cytidine deaminase. By inhibiting cytidine deaminase in the gut and liver, Encovi is designed to allow for oral delivery of decitabine over five days in a given cycle to achieve comparable systemic exposure to IV decitabine. The approval was based on clinical trial results which showed similar drug concentrations between IV decitabine and Encovi. Additionally, about half of the patients who were formerly dependent on transfusions were able to no longer require transfusions during an eight-week period. The safety profile of Encovi was also similar to IV decitabine. Some common side effects of Encovi included fatigue, constipation, hemorrhage, muscle pain, mouth sores, joint pain, nausea, and fever with low white blood cell count. Encovi can cause fetal harm, and both male and female patients of reproductive age are advised to use effective contraception. Encovi received orphan drug designation, which provides incentives to assist and encourage the development of drugs for rare diseases. The FDA collaborated with international agency counterparts on the review of this application as part of Project Orbis. The approval was granted to Aztec Pharmaceuticals, a subsidiary of Atsuka Pharmaceuticals. The FDA also approved a new oxymetazolin ophthalmic solution, which goes by brand name Upnik, for the treatment of acquired blepharoptosis in adults. Basically, blepharoptosis is a drooping eyelid. It's an abnormal low-lying upper eyelid margin with the eye in primary gaze forward. The main muscle that opens the eyelid is called the levator palpebralis. Another muscle that helps the eye open is called the superior tarsal muscle. If there is a problem with either of these muscles or their nerves, blepharoptosis can result. It is not very common. Upnik is a novel, once-daily, direct-acting, alpha-adrenergic receptor agonist that is believed to selectively target muscles and elevate the upper eyelid. The product contains 1 mg of oxymetazolin hydrochloride per ml, which is equivalent to 0.09 mg of oxymetazolin freebase. The approval was based on data from two double-masked, vehicle-controlled, parallel group phase 3 trials that evaluated the efficacy and safety of Upnik in 304 patients with acquired blepharoptosis. Patients were randomized 2 to 1 to receive Upnik once daily or vehicle for 42 days. The primary endpoint was the mean change from baseline in the number of points seen on the Leicester peripheral field test in the study eye at hour 6 on day 1 and hour 2 on day 14. A secondary endpoint included the change from baseline in marginal reflex distance. In both studies, improvement in superior visual field was observed with Omnique at the 2-hour time point and maintained at the 6-hour time point. Results from trial 1 showed that Upnik met the primary endpoint of improvement at hour 6 on day 1 and at hour 2 on day 14 versus vehicle. Additionally, improvements in the Upnik treatment arm were noted in trial 2 at hour 6 on day 1 and hour 2 on day 14 versus vehicle. Both studies demonstrated greater marginal reflex distance increases at both time points versus vehicle. With regard to safety, the most common adverse reactions observed were conjunctival hyperemia, dry eye, vision blurred, installation sight pain, eye irritation, and headache. Upnik should be used with caution in patients with severe or unstable cardiovascular disease, orthostatic hypotension, uncontrolled hypertension or hypotension, cerebral or coronary insufficiency, or Jorgen syndrome. Osmotica, the manufacturer of Upnik, 
expects to have it available by August 2020 to a selected group of ophthalmologists and optometrists through an early experience program. The product will be supplied as a 0.3 ml single patient use container in 15 and 30 count cartons. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.